What we were just blessed with is one of the first Mongolian, modern Mongolian Christian worship songs of this era after communism fell and the church began to, began to flourish and grow. And so this is a rich gift. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In God alone, our souls find rest, peace, and joy. Draw near with faith and courage. Take your rest in God and invite him to take his rest in us. Well, good morning. We want to continue to connect with the Global Church, so we're going to be singing in Thai this morning. I don't think we have anyone here from Thailand, but that's okay. We have many representatives of the Asian continent, so uh, let's enjoy. So we're going to sing a song called Jesus is the Name We Trust In, and I thought it would be helpful if we just go over the small bit of Thai that we're going to speak today. So would you repeat after me? Jong mi kwam chanai pra ong te. Pra on Beng Tuk Sing, Ben Tuk Yang, Ti Jai Kong Rao Kao Pung Ping. Let's do it one more time. Jong Mi Kwam Chanai Pra Ong Te, Pra on Ben Tuk Sing, Ben Tuk Yang, Ti Jai Kong Rao Kao Pung Ping. Fabulous. So that translates to Jesus is the name we trust in. He is everything, all we need. We're fully reliant on him. So we'll sing in Thai and then we'll sing the phrase in English and then the song will continue. There are some copies for you to use, so be blessed. Thank you. 
This morning is Psalm 62. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy. Only in God my soul can find its rest. Find its rest and peace together. Waits in silence, from him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall never be shaken. All of you, as you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence. Their only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. so that I shall never be shaken. God is 
my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Remember this portion of the story of God as it is written in the book that we love from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. Jesus withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. All ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. This is the word of the Lord. Be Lord, may the words of my mouth be your words so that they will be pleasing to you, honoring to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yesterday, Daryl introduced our theme for the week, flourishing through holistic soul care, uh, what it means to care for ourselves as we care for others, kind of so that we can care for others as well. Uh, flourishing through holistic soul care which is exactly what we see Jesus doing in this passage that was so beautifully presented to us by the students. Amen. 
Um, as many of you know, part of my ministry is uh, teaching globally in the area of uh, biblical worship and spiritual formation. This past February, when I was in uh, leading a retreat in Sierra Leone, West Africa, uh, I met Pastor Abu. And um, he was in the retreat I was leading. He was a part of the ministry there. And he, the, ministry, the uh, retreat was on soul care, holistic soul care. And he came to me and he said, you know, I have a real hard time wanting to be like Jesus in my ministry. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, well, Jesus was just so busy. I mean, he was always going here and going there and healing people and, you know, like uh, being attacked and, um, you know, doing miracles. And it was just so busy. It was exhausting. I said, I really don't feel like that's the kind of ministry that I want to have. I said, well, let's just continue on with our retreat here and hopefully things will change. And it was exciting that at the end, towards the end of the retreat, he came to me and he said, you know, I get it. I get it. Because we looked at passages like this Matthew passage about how Jesus cared for himself. He did, he modeled for us healthy ministry by taking care of himself, this soul care. And so Pastor Abu said, yes, I can see now that's what I want to model my ministry offer after is the way Jesus cared for himself in the midst of ministry. Jesus modeled soul care as he took time away for silence, prayer, and solitude. At the end, he was by himself. Jesus stole away from the crowds at important times uh, before intense periods of ministry and before important decisions needed to be made, and even after intense periods of ministry. He took time for himself. He valued time alone with his father. Needed to become refreshed, to regroup, to hear from his father, to just sit in silence with his gracious God. And time to pray for his followers to pray for his enemies, for those especially who were plotting his demise. We can learn from the model that Christ lived out for us in relation to soul care through intentional times of silence and solitude. And we can learn from Jesus' use of scripture in various contexts that we know he spent time to understand and deeply know the word as it applied to all of life. Sure, he was a part of writing the scriptures, so he knew them well. But what he models for us is that it's worth spending time to know the word. It's worth spending time to have it so in, ingrained in us that it flows out of us. I think of um, a convocation and Jack Van Marion, who had memorized the Sermon on the Mount, and it just flowed out of him to bless us. Words that came out of Danelle as she preached that were words of scripture that were embedded in her heart and in her life that just flowed out of her because they had spent time memorizing these chunks, these passages. And um, Jesus did that too. He quoted scripture. He would, he would as he addressed the crowds, I mean, he would say, so as you've heard, as you know, and knowing that they would have heard these same words in the synagogue, he referred back to them. You've heard it said. He quoted often uh, when he was in the synagogue and in the temple. Quoted from Isaiah when he was showing his displeasure with the money changers in the temple. So we can practice soul care, Jesus style, by memorizing chunks of scripture. And then letting it dwell in us and letting it flow out of us. Another practice um, uh, with scripture that I've used and, and really come to uh, value is called Alexio Divina. Alexio Divina. And um, Alexio Divina, basically the Alexio is we get the lectionary, we get reading, so it's, and then Divina is that godly or spiritual divine reading. So it's basically taking time to sit in the word, to sit in a small passage of scripture and to listen to what God has to say to us, to allow the word to form us. So we dwell in the word and let the word dwell in us. 
And with Lexio, there is a pattern. I'm not going to go through that with you. I'd be happy to send you to some websites or you can Google it yourself. But the whole um, idea is to s s be still. Be still and let God speak through his word. And that takes time. We can't, a Bible study is one thing and it's important and it's great. Bible study for your papers, for your um, theological and historical and biblical points, uh, chapters of your papers is so important. And I, but I encourage you to take those same passages that you're studying and pouring into for writing or for preaching or for speaking or teaching and then just sit with them and let them dwell in you and read them over a few times and say, Lord, what do you want to say to me through this passage? And what do you want me to do with this? So many of you probably grew up like I did where you had this little Bible study plan and it was read, ponder, ask and do or something like that. As pretty much what the ancient uh, monastic form of Lexio Divina is. So it's, I, it's pretty amazing to me that um, Bible Gateway comes out with all these Bible reading plans and they don't use any of the words from Lexio Divina, but that's what they are. And uh, it's beautiful. So bringing back these very important ways to sit in scripture and let it form us, let God form us through his word. To do that soul care, to minister to our hearts through his word. Along with Alexia Divina, uh, I've also come to love what's called Visio Divina. So again, it's the seeing, the vision, and this godly seeing or godly gazing, spiritually gazing at a piece of art that comes out of a scripture passage. And so as you gaze at the piece of art, which gazing takes time too, you can't it's not just glancing, gazing, you have to sit with it and really look at the picture while the passage is being read or you go back and forth if it's just you to the passage and ask God, what do you want to say to me through this picture that comes from this passage? And sit with it. What comes, what, what is the first thing you see? What does that mean, Lord, that I'm focused on that? And, and, you, and you go through this process and ask God, again, to form you through what you're seeing and hearing, to stop and smell the roses. Um, because it engages our right brain, Visio Divina is well-suited to complement your study experience here at IWS. So as you're sitting with a passage that you're studying for your biblical chapter or whatever else you're, you're working on, um, I would encourage you to look around for some artwork that speaks to you from that passage and sit with that as well. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you, tend to your soul, care for your soul through uh, the art. Um, when teaching in other cultures and cultural contexts and leading spiritual exercises like Visio Divina, I always try to find local artwork to use. Uh, for example, for the meditation on Psalm 23, I used a piece from Sierra Leone um, that was, or I think it was from Uganda, and I used it in Kenya and Uganda and Sierra Leone. And then I used this, another one for the Philippines by local artists. The art spoke, speaks to the people there. Um, a shepherd from Iowa would not have done well in those contexts. Um, but these spoke. Jesus would often say, consider the lilies. Look at the birds of the air. Look at the fields ripe unto harvest. And he used the art of creation that was all around to draw our eyes to what God is doing in our world and in us, caring for our souls. Silence, solitude, prayer, sitting in the word. This is just a beginning to a life of soul care, tending to our souls. Um, I'm going to quickly tell a, 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 just an example. Um, there's a, a jazz pianist called Harry Connick Jr. Jr. All right, I see a lot of you smiling. And um, uh, there's, a, there's a YouTube clip. I wanted to play it, but it's surely um, copyrighted, so we couldn't do that. But the, the audience was clapping on one and three, 
and they were not supposed to be doing that. It was supposed to be two and four, and so Harry Connick, in his amazing um, style, did this harmonic, um, what's it called, rhythmic, sorry, rhythmic um, adjustment, not adjustment, but just a minute, I lost it here. What is it? Displacement. Displacement, yes. So he did this um, amazing rhythmic displacement to get the crowd back on sync. Amazing. So I encourage you to go Harry Connick Jr. rhythmic displacement and find this. Um, I am not musically trained, obviously, because I couldn't even remember the name of it, of what it's called, but I could tell when things were back in sync. You know, that's the thing about our spiritual life. Um, maybe for a little while, you can't tell, but then you can tell. You know, and others around you know. And yet it takes that rhythmic displacement, that God entering into our lives allowing the Holy Spirit to change us, to make that rhythmic displacement in our own lives, to get us back in sync. And these are the things that we're talking about this week, the things that we can care for our soul to allow the space and the time for the Holy Spirit to work. What rhythmic displacement do you need to make in your life right now? What is it that you need for your soul care to get back into sync? What do you need to ask God for? Let us enter into a season of silence. Please stand for the prayers. <clears throat> Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we trust the safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Please give voice to your thanksgivings and burdens of your heart. Lord, I thank you for uh, sung praises in Mongolian and Thai and every language. Lord, I pray for uh, battered and otherwise abused women around the world that you will be their defender and rescuer. Give them courage and faith and deliverance. For abused and neglected children, 
that you'll be a father to them and protect them, provide for them. And the believers in Turkey. Lord, we give you thanks for all the blessings of this life, but especially we give you thanks for the wonders of your creation. Uh, thank you for making us in your image and for fellowship and to love and to love you. Thank you for uh, giving us your creation to help take care of. And when we, um, when we failed you and spoiled it and ourselves with sin and disobedience, we thank you that you didn't destroy us or abandon us, but you pursued us in all different kinds of ways, eventually sending your only begotten, the eternal Logos, to become one of us to grow up just like us in every way, yet without sin. Thank you that his life and his teaching show us how to live. Thank you that his death destroys death forever, that his resurrection and ascension awake us, awakens us and all of creation to newness of life. So, Father, we offer you this day. Fill us with your spirit for the work that you've given us to do. And now we sum up our prayers as Jesus taught us.